All right, shalom, 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 Rastafari, more light. Mm. I will. So let's talk about what's going on at this moment. At this moment with gold. Let's look at gold prices, gold prices. Now, now, why is all this connected with what we're talking about here? Elanine, Elanine, the comet, the planet, Nibiru, the star. March 11th, that was tsunami, Japan. You see the effects when this comet, planet, Nibiru, or star came within the orbit, you understand, of the Earth or came within an alignment, you understand, the magnetics, the push and the pull. Now we're, we're, we're nearing the time of the Yom Teruah, you understand, which is the trumpets, also called the Rosh Hashanah, and that's the evening of September 28th to 29th. Uh, note, uh, Rosh Hashanah is not found in the Bible, and, and the, the two-day idea of it is strictly a latter-day a lot of they Jew or the other Jews who call themselves Jews, they introduce this, um, but they know that it's not there even themselves. It's in their own documents that they admit it's not there. But what they cover up is the Yom Teruah, and the Yom Teruah is a very important, a very important uh, feast. It's called the Feast of Trumpets. This is the Feast of Trumpets. So now we're exploring this right now, but what we're really looking at is what's coming up on September 28th to 29th. So we would not be doing our job properly in, in spirit and in truth if we did not warn our people about this and, and it comes to pass and the warner sees these things happening and the warner says nothing about it. And this is one of the reasons why we're touching on this, even though we've touched on some of these elements already in previous videos, but we're dedicating these series of videos specifically to this common um, E. Lenin or... Elenine or however they want to pronounce this. If you notice, the media has been awfully, could we say God awfully? God awfully silent on saying anything about this particular comment. In fact, when we started to do some of our research on this, we saw there was a connection with March 11th and the tsunami in Japan. And we said, okay, because we know that there's, there's going to be these heavenly signs as well, what we were seeking to do is to ground ourselves. I mean, we have to ground ourselves and our people in that innocence and get some stability in our souls. You know, saying? some stability in our souls. So therefore, the teaching, the teaching of His Majesty and the testimony of His Christ is what's really important to us because that is the only way that we will be able to stand in the holy, in the holy place. Now. The holy place is not a place in the sense of a temporal place, but it's a state, it's a place. One can even call it a sifarot, a sifra. It's a chakra. You understand? It's a particular place and space. It's not a temporal space. It's like when we say the church. The church is not a building. It's not merely a building. It's extended to also mean the building where the church gathers. So it's the area where the church gathers. So the holy place, see, Yahweh says this, that it's holy because his what is set there? His name is set there. You recall when we read from, from our, um, our book right here, uh, Rastafari Preliminary Notes, on the H.I.M. Hala Selassie and Hard Bible, the introduction to the Book of the Seven Seals, when His Imperial Majesty being asked, he said something very interesting, and I'm not too sure if you made this connection with the topic matter of holy and holy place, but His Imperial Majesty said this right here concerning, um, concerning when he was asked, uh, where is it? Uh, he was asked, Your Imperial Majesty, um, Your Imperial Majesty, over oh, right here, Your Imperial Majesty, as a member of the body of Christ, what do you feel you can contribute to the church? And he said, All men are endowed with natural responsibility. This responsibility, in turn, distributed and delegated to all according to his gift, and is expected that each one to fulfill his responsibility. This responsibility, in turn, is to God, and thus, for example, man or one would start his work 
asking God to bless the beginning and thank God for a good ending too. This is getting into the holy place. This is how you get into the holy place in grace wherever you are. You understand? Wherever you are. You understand? And also amongst whoever you are too. You understand? We, because one shall be taken away and one shall be left. Remember that concerning the rapture. We touched on it in an earlier video. Go check it out. Um, we believe that all people in all their responsibilities that delegated to them will begin and finish their work in God's name. So beginning and finishing it in God's name, if you look at Torah, it says that the holy place will be the place that he appoints his name, where he appoints his name, you know what I'm saying, where his name to be. So the holy place is, should not be confused with some of these temporal holy places, these temporal holy places. And as his majesty gave a brief and so we're giving a brief answer concerning that part about the holy place and the holy space too. Because the holy space and the holy place is within. It, it, it is within. You understand? You know, the kingdom of God is within. You understand? So if you reach the kingdom of God within, you've reached the holy place within. So then in spite of whatever happens around you, you understand? You shall not fear. One will not fear because one is in relationship and in covenant, you understand, with the God of heaven and earth and the sea and, and all that is therein. So there's no need to fear. You understand? There's no need. He has not given us a spirit of fear, but of, 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 of love and, and, and of a sound mind. If you look around in the world, one thing that people don't have in this present time is a sound mind, is, is a sound mind. There's insanity, you understand? There is sorcery, the pharmaceuticals, so forth, so on, et al. Now, at this moment, gold, everybody's talking about trying to hoard gold or find gold. Gold is, I think it's in the 1500, maybe, maybe 2000, it's, it's crossed 2000. It, it could have doubled, you understand, by the time we post this up there. U.S. debt, you understand, to the so-called the, 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 the GDP, um, it may be at or near 100%, $14.3 trillion at least. But get this, abortion is around $50 million. Think about this for a moment, people. Stop just thinking about everyone's saying, well, you don't know this person's story and that person's story. Um, no, I don't. But can you think of 50 million people being killed? Can you think of 50 million? I mean, can you imagine why America is sinking, in a sense, why America is sinking and, 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 and is in the situation that it's in? 50 million people, 50 million, million not, not, if it was one million, if it was five hundred thousand, it was fifty. If it was five thousand. If it was five, that would be bad. But it's fifty million. This is where it says that her sins, her chatiyat, her missing of the mark of righteousness, of truth, of love, has reached up unto the heaven. And may our Black Lord and Savior, Gietachinam and Hanatachin Jesus Christos Yeshua Hamoshiach. May he forgive, if he will, all the bloodshed, you understand, and all of this khatiyat. May he have mercy, especially because we know that there's a lot of, a lot of young women and, and, and young people who have been deceived and deluded and stirred the, right, the, the wrong way, you understand, the, who have been stirred the wrong way and away from the right way and the truth, you understand, even from their very birth. And we pray that they also find find his grace to be to be saved. But America at this moment is like that picture. I don't know if you remember this picture. We use it in a video. It's a picture of um, back in um, I think Nebuchadnezzar or Balthazar's time, where the handwriting on the wall. You remember the hand that they saw the handwriting on the wall. They had all of the of the Hebrew. Um, um, utensils from the tabernacle and and they were having a party and an orgy and everything and they were drinking out of the holy utensils while they was having this 
party or, or the orgy. This is where America is right now. It's just like you have a split screen of that picture where the man is like looking at the handwriting on the wall, you know, and everyone around is still eating and drinking so forth and so on. This is where we're at. This is where America is at at the moment with Obama, with Obama, first black, African-American, whatever. But it's, it's only ironic. It began with us, and it must also end with us. Obama is in the White House. He's waving the flag, in a sense. Literally, he's waving the flag of abortion. He's waving the flag of homosexuality. These are his biggest agendas. And even many of his black supporters, some of them are getting in the cojones, the balls, even like uh, Tavis Smiley and Cornel West and some others, to even challenge the president to also address the, the base or the, or the worst afflicted, namely black people and particular black males. You know, if white males are losing their jobs, and, and w then, then you can imagine what's going on with, with, with black people and with black males. But they don't want to be under blackmail, right? So they're not saying nothing about this. You understand? And Obama already said it from the very beginning. I'm not the president of, of, of there's no black America or white America. There is only America. So for some of these same hypocrites to think that Obama is being hypocritical, in fact, Obama already showed us his colors before. In fact, that's what we liked about Obama, many of us to some degree. Um, even so-called politically, we like the fact that, that he was a crafty politician. <laughs> but who says he would not be crafty, you know what I'm saying, even with us as well? Because who knows what, you know, people say, I know his heart. I don't know his heart. You know what I'm saying? The heart is exceedingly evil. Who can know it? Only the Almighty knows his heart. But we can judge a tree by its fruit. And the Obama administration, the Obama administration basically is waving, that's their main issue. Their main issue is abortion, homosexuality, you understand? Um, and all of this is part of Satan and the Satanists and the Luciferians' useless, vain, useless, and worthless counterfeit lies. You understand? And coupled with that also we have this rise of Islam in America where it seems like Islam has been put on an equal footing in America, you understand, by politicians and others with Christianity and even above Christianity and even to some extent Judaism, which, which really boggles the mind. You know, there is no church in Mecca. There's not one single church in Mecca, you understand? You can't even drink any alcohol, you understand, in Mecca. Even wine, which is different than alcohol, if you, if you, if you knew, you understand, is different than alcohol. You can't even do any of that, you understand? But these are, these are the causes that are being championed in America. Think about it for a moment. Think about it. So while the rest of America's so-called cult, the rest of the American cult, where's the rest of the American cult? The rest of the American cult, namely Hollywood, uh, TV, the malls, the media, the music, the pornography, you understand? Or really we should say all of it really is pornography. You understand? Some of it's just soft core. Some of it is hardcore, but the soft core has become mainstream American culture. You understand? Or really the American cult. You understand? It continues to wage a high level spiritual warfare against the holiness, you understand, and any perceived holiness or any attempt at holiness of God. You understand? Any true attempt, and namely against the Judeo-Christian, you understand, concept. You understand the Judeo-Christian concept. So look at, look at the public schools. Um, Darwin's idiot form, and Darwin's form is an idiot form. There is an evolution, but we'll address that on another level. There's spiritual evolution. You understand, spiritually people have devolved. So spiritually people have to evolve. You understand? And to a certain degree, there have been certain physical changes among people. 
such as white people coming out of black people, old-time leprosy, so forth and so on. But these are clean lepers now, not to be confused with the unclean lepers that are spoken of in the scripture. You understand? Know but in the public schools, Darwin's racist, you understand, know theories of evolution have been taught, and, 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 and this, is, <laughs> this is incredible, you understand? Know but you, you, you have to recognize it's very credible. You understand? It may seem incredible. We, we, we may want it to be incredible, but it's credible. In other words, believe it. It is what it is. You understand? There's no prayer. You understand? There's no Bible reading is allowed, you understand, in so-called public schools. And then they want to ask, why are public schools failing? Why are there so much crime and violence in the public schools, and most of the children come to the public schools from whatever their, their background with this. It's not like they're learning it in the school so much, but the school becomes like sanctuary. The schools become a sanctuary for these, for these devilish destruction of the youth. You understand? Destruction of the youth. Now the end begins. These are like the days of Noah. These are like the days of Noah. We talked about the 16 or so signs. Some break it down to 14 signs, and we looked at it. We'd like to go over that, but 14 signs of the collapse of our modern world. No, 14 signs of the collapse of this Gentile world dominion, of the Greco-Roman type, this Greco-Roman um, type is what is the world, is what is the seclora. And it's interesting, if you look back on, on Greece, Greece fell in the same ways, you understand, a, a moral failure, you understand, that eventually led to a natural failure. It's like the moral failure, you understand, went on previous to nature wiping them out, to nature rearranging until it destroyed that civilization and another civilization took over from there. Rome also experienced the same thing, but Rome never fell. Completely, Rome just changed from the Roman Empire to the Holy Roman Empire, and now we have America and, and her mother, England, you understand? And what are they shopping to the world? Idolatry. American idol. Where does this come from? England. All this comes from England. You know how many English folks, and it's nothing against English people or whatnot like that, but it's just interesting that there's a lot of, this is like the second um, um, British invasion. You probably have heard about that, the British invasion. Go check out that Freeman Perspective video if you can. It's called um, Wash Your Brain. You understand? They briefly touch on that. Others have also touched on that. If you're unfamiliar about it, go, go check it out while you still can, while there is still time. But this September, what can we expect to see this September or beginning after this September? You understand? The creation of a Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital is one of the clearest signs of Daniel 9 and 27 today. Although we might think that we've seen it before, that we've seen all of this before with other presidents, going back to the so-called Camp David and, and the last uh, black pharaoh of Egypt, um, Anwar Sadat, so forth and so on, and Menachem um, Begin, you understand? Those were... Those were signs of it. You understand? Those were signs of it. But today is much worse than yesterday. Today is much, it's not, it wasn't much better yesterday. No, today is much worse. In other words, we have this, this, um, this, uh, how can you say, increasing, uh, 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 and, and, and we, we have a sign and then we're going to really see it happen. We have a sign of it first. You understand? It's like you have a, a vision of it, and then you begin to see the vision now come into, 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 into reality. And this is what we're seeing right here with this um, creation of a so-called Palestinian state. Now, what's interesting about this is that if you are like us into our Torah scroll readings and feedings, that before the Yom, the Yom uh, Teruah, before the Feast of Trumpets, 
the 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 Torah portion reading that is um, usually read is what's called the Nitzabim, the Nitzabim. And the Nitzabim area, is what, which is the 51st uh, Torah portion reading, and the 50th all deal with what's known as the Palestinian Covenant. But it's the Palestinian Covenant is also known as the Mosaic, the Mosaic Covenant. So we have to really understand how we have both the scriptural, you understand, or the biblical, or the Hebraic, the ancient, overlapping with a modern type of a counterfeit. So we have the modern that is trying to, synch- like synchronicity. It's just like the September 11th being Ethiopian New Year. That was another synchronicity right there. So we have an alignment now of the satanic world global hierarchies, you understand, seeking to align their doings as a pseudo, as a, with a pseudo spiritual, using the spiritual energies of the times to align their work for success because they tried it the other way and it did not succeed. They've been trying their new world, their devilish satanic new world order for a very long time. And it, and it hasn't succeeded. But a planet or a star that's nearing Earth with possibly, they say, four to eight planets or moons with comets or asteroids in it. This is what we have in this so-called E. Lenin. We have a planet or a star that is nearing the Earth. And they say, based on what science and the science has been able to see with their high-powered satellites and everything else, they speculate, but there's something to that speculate. They just can't confirm whether it's four planets or eight moons or, or, or eight planets and four moons, or it's a combination of uh, if it's really four that they're seeing or, or really eight that they're seeing. And that's also interesting, the four, the square doubling right there, with comets or asteroids. This has comets and asteroids that are in it as well. And they've been talking about a possible asteroid hit in the other Shabbat, in the other Shabbatical um, um, teaching and study we, we read, we touched on the milestone, you know, the great milestone where the angel, you understand, throws down that, that, that great milestone into the sea and says, thus with violence shall, shall Babylon be destroyed and everything. This is also very interesting. And when the Bible, Christ also says about um, those who offend the child, those who offend, uh, 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 offend the newborn and the child in the sense of um, that suffer not the little children to come unto me, you understand? And he says, a woe to those who, who, who try to stop that newborn child and with the amount of abortion, with, what, with the exploitation of children that's going on by the likes of the Disney and the, and the other sorcerers and everything like that, with this, it, it, it does not seem unlikely that this comet, asteroid, planet, star might not have asteroids in it which might hit the earth. As it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. Because if such an asteroid were to hit the earth, almost anywhere in the earth, those who get hit by the asteroid and get knocked out one time, they might receive a, um, a beneficat or a barakat, a blessing in a sense. The rest of us, you know what will happen? There will be a dust cloud. There will be a disruption, you understand, where the sun will be blocked out. This is also one of the possible ways that the sun could be blocked out, as it was in the beginning, which, which took away the dinosaurs and destroyed their civilization as well, we will see something like that in these end times. I mean, what's so shocking is that this is what's really going on out there in the heavens. And if you look at your local news and, and even the international news, and you go to look at this on a lot of the news media, maybe they might begin, they might say something a day or two beforehand. But they knew about these things for weeks, for months, for years, for so forth and so on. The rapture now of Yeshua's bride, which is the church, has often been connected with this. And we say, yes, there is a rapture, but no, it's not the way that they told you. 
It's not the, the popular way that they told you. Will some people disappear in a sense? Yes. Some people will disappear. You understand? I mean, will they float up into heaven in the, in the clouds or something like that and leave behind their clothing? Um, not likely. You understand? That's, that's just made for TV or that's made for movies or whatnot like that. But the main part of the rapture is a spiritual rapture of one's consciousness. In other words, the spiritual rapture because we're caught up to meet him in the ear. We're caught up to meet him in the ether. We're caught up to meet him in the, in, in the spirit. See, old Christianity, because it was so carnal and fleshy, looked at everything carnal and fleshy. And they have just recognized recently the metaphysical aspects, the metaphysical aspects to God's word. Even they just recognized that such a thing as an atom and the, and the quantum. A lot of these sciences were known. You understand, in ancient days. In fact, you find a lot of it actually in the Bible if you could only interpret correctly. So these are not new things, but the rapture of Yeshua's bride, which is the church, is often pointed to at this time of the Yom Teruah, or the, or the feast or the festival of trumpets. What's interesting about the feast of trumpets is that a trumpet or sound, sound is spiritual. Did you know? Sound is spiritual. The air is spiritual. So if a trumpet is blown and everyone who hears that sound, what do they do? They respond to that trumpet sound. But now if some are deaf, dumb, and blind, you see, they, they, they go on with what they're going on. So when the Feast of Trumpets comes along, most people are just going to go on. They're not going to even think in their mind. There's no special preparation other than to remember to think on these things and do the appropriate actions along with the righteous or the holy thought. You see what I'm saying? Like if it's the Sabbath, you understand, we remember the Sabbath. That means we shouldn't be doing a lot of, a lot of other things that we damn well know is not holy. Now, we do fall short, yeah, but at some point, we, you know, we're going to have to, you know, face, you know, face judgment. You know what I mean? And, um... The Almighty is merciful, you know what I'm saying, but, and graceful, and we've been saved by grace, not by work. 